There was this ad of a company which were recruiting management trainees, and the compensation was very high. I went and I gave the exam because I saw the name of the company was Lin. But the girl I was <laughs> dating that time, <laughs> she was a big fan of Lin chocolates. Okay? Uh huh. So every time I had to meet her or whatever, I had to take these Lindor chocolates. And I'm like, "Boss, yeah, I'll get the bloody job, unlimited Lin." <laughs> <laughs> Lin chocolates. We wake up next day in a hangover, but still lies on the price. Before <laughs> someone tells me, "Ki umkar, you don't have a background in petroleum engineering. How are you gonna ace it?" I'm like, "Ye kya bak chori kar raha hai? What are you talking about?" <laughs> it turned out to be an oil and gas manufacturing company. It's not Lin. <laughs> it is Linde. So you. It has the same <laughs> logo, but the T and the E is different. And in excitement, I had overlooked everything. Shit! But I aced the interview. Got your store, ta? Store, to da? Nyani kakal? Imagine a podcast. To kakal? To kakal? Tell them what is to kakal? Tell them, tell them. Who pooped? Acha. If you go to the Dharavi of Russia, you will know. Who pooped here? Who pooped? It's on? <laughs> you have to try it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's start. Rolling. Good to go, boss. Yeah. Paka. Why are all bald men successful? Who are we talking about? <laughs> are we talking about Andrew Tate or Johnny Sins? We are talking about Mr. Omkar. No, it's it's not about being successful. Uh, but let's talk about balding, right? Because you know you have to really look confident or feel mm -hmm. confident. Um, you have to own it. You have to own it, right? Like mm -hmm. I still remember, I was was having a problem with my hairline, so mm -hmm. I used to have these all innovative uh, methods of covering my receding hairline. And then after that, I still remember it was my farewell party. I was going to Russia for my PhD, and uh, the night I was looking at the mirror, and I'm like, "Will Russian women really like this <laughs> <laughs> receding hairline?" Right. So then I still remember that night. You know, I was, I was having a good time. So I ended up googling and checking that you know hottest Russian men. Turned out three out of the ten on the list were bald. Let's go. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So then I landed over there. The first thing I do, the first ruble I spent in Moscow is go to a barber and tell tell him that hey, you know what, shave my head off. <laughs> he first trimmed it. They're mm. like, are you sure? I was like, no, no, wait, trim it first, <laughs> right? So he used blade one. He trimmed it. I'm like, no, you know what? This is this is looking all right. Um, then I like, you know, use the razor. Let's shave it all. I shaved it all. I belong to a Marathi middle class family, so people normally shave their heads off when they lose somebody in the family. Yeah. My parents were shocked. <laughs> <laughs> And then after I shaved my head off completely, I realized my front part of the skull is good, but my back part is a little <laughs> flat. So I call my momma, but I ask that, you know, mom, when I was a kid, did I like fall? <laughs> so she's like, yeah, you know, when when you were a kid, your your skull is a little, you know, like clay. It Pele takes clay. Pehle bola tha. Ha, I'm like, no shit, mom. Then mom's like, I told you not to shave. <laughs> right. So then I realized that hey, you know what? When I'm looking straight in the mirror, I'm smiling. But when I'm looking, I'm started to become conscious. Mm. Then somebody told me, "Omkar, you look good, but you will look killer if you become like ripped." Mm -hmm. Tab se I'm like, you know what? Let me get a six pack abs. Let me go like all bonkers, crazy. And then I got fit. And then I'm like, I don't care which angle people look at me from. <laughs> the, like, the first thing they'll observe is my back, my shoulders, whatever, whatever. So coming to the point, right? Like bald people are confident. Mm -hmm. I don't and and you know confidence is. A prelude to being successful, mm. right? You know, I don't like people who are on the brink, right? Like half receding hairline, receding hairline, yeah. right? I like, you know, 
own it right once you own it you get the confidence i thought this was all the startup stuff that led to this no yeah it's hereditary <laughs> <laughs> you should see my dad and my grandfather everybody is like you know classic balding with a with a crown behind typical indian thing typical indian no globally also yeah globally also people have the same kind of crown so you started your schooling in mvm uh, would you like to tell our audience what mvm is mvm is manik vidya mandir <laughs> aka a place where middle class maharashtrians send their kids uh, it was a coed school and until 6th grade i realized that there are poorer versions of mvm <laughs> <laughs> right so that belongs to you know i really respect the organization because i had the best time growing up it's called ies mm-hmm. ies stands for indian education society now they have a lot of schools across mumbai we were in their smallest school and the youngest school i must be like batch 2 batch 3 uh i grew up in like a really small house in bandra east a very typical middle class you've always been a bandra boy Are the problem is you can say Bandra boy very proudly, but then when people ask you which part of Bandra, <laughs> Bandra East, that we not even Bandra East, so like Bandra East still has BKC, right? So are you from Bandra East? Well, so like, yeah, Bandra East. Where Kherwadi? <laughs> right? Now you know what I realized. Kherwadi sala da. You have the fanciest. You have the Scottish accent, mm. English accent. You just can't say Kherwadi <laughs> with swag. Right? So. Yeah, I just realized that my parents sent me to that school from grade one to grade ten, like from mini KG. I don't know. Do you guys have mini KG and everything? I had junior KG when I was. Yeah, so junior KG. Yeah. Below is mini KG, junior KG, senior KG, then grade one to grade ten. We were an SSC school, one twenty students. How much did you score on your boards? I scored ninety one. <laughs> Damn. 91 no sorry 88 i scored 88 and plus we got that additional 3% to match up with it so i scored 88% which was you know a pleasant surprise uh in the 9th grade i scored very well uh but i used to be in the top 3 until 6th grade Mm-hmm. 7th grade until puberty hit me <laughs> then i'm like there's more to life than <laughs> than actually scoring good but but actually i topped the state in uh, social sciences congratulations yeah and i wanted to make my career over there in archaeology i wanted to be archaeologist while growing up you ask me anything about history there's a good chance i'll be able to tell you or geography a yeah, capital of any country um mozambique that's a tough one <laughs> Maputo. Non-African. Maputo. Maputo. Myanmar. That's a tough one again. <laughs> <laughs> so, from you wanted to study archaeology. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then how did you end up in NMIMS BSc Economics? No, so there's eleventh and twelfth grade. Right? So there's a very interesting <laughs> college uh, called M L Dhanukar College uh-huh. in Villaparle East. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that's where. More Marathi people than I've ever <laughs> seen go over there, right? Mm. And, and nothing against Marathi people; they're my people. I love them. Mm. But they all used to come from like Borivli, Dhaisar, the northern parts of the city. And you know, when when you're coming from that part of the city, you're coming with a lot of ambition. You're coming with a lot of like discipline, mm. right? Because you have to catch you have, the you train. You have that dog in you. Yeah, <laughs> no shit. And they are literally the underdogs, right? So uh-huh. they have to uh, prove themselves. and i come from like a bandra west kind of a background because my school was in bandra west mm. so i happened to make friends around you know that part of the city and suddenly when i'm put in dhanukar college and, and i'm like why am i going to dhanukar like i got good marks on my mm-hmm. 10th grade right this is not the reward i should i should have so i went to dhanukar college the first time i go to the college i uh, my fashion my dressing sense was significantly different than than the people who used to come over there i was immediately like an outcast but not in a bad way but like you know hey this guys someone different than us mm-hmm. right i finally was able to find my tribe over there and uh, good set of people just like me uh ended up in dhanukar dhanukar was like a chartered accountancy factory everybody who came in 11th 12th grade they were all doing this but you were not in that CPT. direction no i got into that direction right uh-huh. in 11th grade i scored 49% uh-huh. right uh, i still remember in my sipper at carried vodka for my mathematics exam 
and uh, you know it was very rudimentary infrastructure right like mm-hmm. i love that college but you know it was still mm. like under construction it's very mm-hmm. rudimentary it's mm-hmm. a blink and a miss mm. and it was top 3 commerce colleges in mumbai by the way back then right mm-hmm. it was poddar hr and nanukar college mm. and uh, 11th grade i scored like 49% or 51% i f- god i still remember like 11 or 12 in my maths and i don't know how i cleared it and then uh, i think this was more like my reaction to my parents also because i wanted to pursue a career in history mm-hmm. in um uh in archaeology mm-hmm. right and I'm still trying to remember tell me what's the capital of myanmar first because it will not leave my mind it's rangoon right google it's rangoon right rangoon no rangoon was myanmar? the previous one <laughs> Otherwise, it'll not leave, leave <laughs> my mind. <laughs> Just tell me the starting letter. It's N. N. Yeah, tell the whole thing. N A Y. Nine. 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 Pidao. Nine. Pidao. Nine. Pidao. Nine. Pidao. N A Y. Say no to pedos. I don't know. Okay. Huh. Anyways. Mm-hmm. so it was more of my reaction to my mm-hmm. parents who mm-hmm. you know i really wanted to go to arts my whole vision was like you know i go to xavier's yes. uh, study mm-hmm. be in history um be an archaeologist or a historian i wanted to be a curator of a museum but then uh, you know my parents as much as i love them they belong to a very typical uh, frame of mind where mm-hmm. you know don't take risky decisions you don't blame them no no i don't blame yeah. them i love them right uh, i but again you know the culture what they belong to it's it's a very low risk mm-hmm. taking culture right mm. so they said that no umkar you know what you do your ca and everything and after you become successful museum <laughs> do museum i'm like okay right so it was more like my my rebel mm. kind of a reaction to mm-hmm. them in 12th grade um, i kind of sobered up a little bit 11th was a lot of partying must be 17 that time mm-hmm. i did everything i had a piercing in my eyebrows <laughs> both my ears were pierced i used to play the guitar listen to death metal <laughs> right complete complete metal head right so cool kid nah, not cool kid like an outcast right like mm. you know i still remember i don't know whether it exists today or not Do you guys know what is IROC? IROC still happens? No. No. Right. No. <laughs> no. IROC. IROC used to be this uh, annual competition of bands. Mm-hmm. So I participated. They did not qualify. <laughs> My band did not qualify. You had a band. Yeah, I had a band. No, a good band, right? Uh, pretty good. We used to do like everything from like folk to rock, whatever. Paid gigs? No paid gigs. I'll tell you about paid gigs later. I used to do paid gigs in Russia. That was good money, right? like musical performance pages mm-hmm. right so um what was i talking about i rock i rock oh mm-hmm. shit then you know i you know what's a mosh pit yes yeah so i go to a mosh pit <laughs> i beat up somebody i get beaten up in the mosh pit <laughs> nobody knows what's happening i come home like with a concussion mm-hmm. and and i'm like yeah this is this is what what i want to be right and this is the biggest misfit for somebody who's from the hanukar college mm-hmm. in 12th grade i kind of sobered up i started seeing this uh, girl and she was like this very studious girl and i realized that if i have to spend time with her i have to study right so you have to get your shit together yeah i had to get my shit together <laughs> uh, so i gave cpt CPT mm-hmm. is like this entrance exam for chartered accountancy. Uh-huh. God knows how I cleared it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like screw it let me do chartered accountancy. And um I went to a beautiful college called Ruya College. Okay? I really love it. I went there for one month and for some random time I had given this NMAT which is the entrance mm-hmm. exam of NMIMS. Uh-huh. When the ranks came out my rank was like 365 370. I like bullshit. this is going to happen i still remember i went to went for the interview and they are like why do you want to study economics so i very candidly said that economics is a study of money and i want to earn money <laughs> so that's the only reason right everybody else is like from these really top schools mm-hmm. like very detailed answers they really want to be there they really want to be uh-huh. there right like they know about like econometrics right from start mm-hmm. they know about you know how macro economic factors contribute to like day to day life like they know the, the gdp per capita of myanmar no not at all 
right nor are they the <laughs> Uh, that's a dark joke but not at the, the no, you can don't uh, hesitate can I, no not i i was like the immigrant who had come from myanmar <laughs> <laughs> right uh, so i'd have like mm-hmm. no chance right and then tapa tap one after the other they started um, you know people started opting out and it was a class size of 30 mm-hmm. i was nicely enjoying my time in ruya love the canteen over there mm-hmm. uh, and uh, i decided that i don't want to do ca right i wanted to do something did you break up with that girl that's why yes acha that is also true <laughs> at least she broke up with me because she wanted to focus on oh, ca, CA. <laughs> i hope she doesn't watch <laughs> she still it's not become a joke they got to cut <laughs> 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 but she's very studious right uh-huh. so um uh then after that we kind of uh split and then i was very happy in um, ruya but then my parents were again like hey you know what you got to come to nmims this is an amazing college It's, ruya is here only you don't know ruya no crap <laughs> ruya is in matunga oh has to be like really good college like mm-hmm. the vibe of those like you know people who study over there are activists free thinkers mm-hmm. you know really good vibe mm-hmm. right and it it's not like a rich people place mm-hmm. right it's it's a place for, where for everyone for everyone but you got to be intelligent to be a mm-hmm. part of ruya right uh, ruya is more known for science mm-hmm. but i took uh, i was doing my ba in economics because till that time i had studied so much for the interview i'm like might as well <laughs> utilize yeah. it but then i got a call from nmims and uh, it's five times more expensive it's like 1 lakh rupees mm-hmm. and uh, ruya was 20000 rupees a year 15000 or something my dad's like it's chill we'll pay so we went to nmims suddenly a very different classroom only 30 people in the mm-hmm. classroom there were people from uh, like amdabad uh, surat every part of the country right mm-hmm. and suddenly i'm talking interacting with people from different parts of the country mm-hmm. and i'm like a bombay boy mm-hmm. so i'm like screw these guys here i i still have my old friends so for the first year of my college i never really <laughs> interacted with with anybody and you I'm didn't just, associate with them yeah i don't really relate, <laughs> relate with them mm-hmm. but then later group projects and everything and then my other friends were a little too relaxed i got 7 kts in an how, how many subjects did you have i don't remember my cgpa was the second lowest in the class the lowest was my best friends <laughs> second lowest to third lowest right mm-hmm. yeah it was it was a survival for me in in an mms the exams were too difficult for me and i failed so many times my god right like i still remember but again nobody gave a damn about it like those were your parents a- not on your back kuch alag hi chal rahe the na shit abhi matlab 2010 to 2013 i was working is it a blur on- <laughs> it's not a blur it's it's very definitive actually because i was working on my entrepreneurial venture mm-hmm. i published a book that time uh an anthology actually i published a very cool anthology by the name of, i thought it was cool uh called reflections i used to uh, write poems and my friend used to click photographs mm-hmm. and instead of the caption i used to write a poem. poem and we used to flip it around right like sometimes i used to give him a challenge that hey this is a poem and uh, you know i like to write very deep tragic poems mm-hmm. so i used to give him a challenge ki boss understand what this poem is and try to click a photograph of it तो हम लोग कैसे मस्त जुगलबंदी करते थे एंड देन वी रियलाइज दैट वी आर सेटिंग ऑन सम गुड स्टॉक सो वी कैंड ऑफ पब्लिश्ड इट एंड देन वी स्टार्टेड सेलिंग इट टू कॉफी शॉप कॉफी शॉप्स ब्रू वर्ल्ड कैफे था तभी जावा करके एक थे बहुत तभी कॉफी कल्चर वॉज ग्रोइंग इन दिटी या सो और तभी तो टू जी था राइट सो पीपल लाइक लिटरली वेंट टू द कॉफी शॉप टू चिल तो हम लोग ऐसा बेचते हैं वॉज वेरी गुड राइट सो आई स्टिल रिमेंबर आई वेंट टू माई professor over there and i'm like i want to start this entrepreneurial venture screw studies i don't want to study anymore that was your first startup it was like it was a hustle did you have like some like lemonade stand or something in school college nahi <laughs> i i had a catering uncle uh-huh. in my building 
and uh, i used to help him do all these catering gigs try to get him some catering gigs mm-hmm. i was 10th grade that time 10th mm-hmm. or 11th grade that time and then uh, i goofed up at one event mm-hmm. which was shahrukh khan had launched this tv show called mm-hmm. kya aap paachvi paas tez ho do you know this aha uh-huh. nope which year were you born 2005 that's the year the show came out no 2007 <laughs> no 2000, 2000 yeah something like that around mm-hmm. that time right so i was like i goofed up big time right i mm-hmm. i don't even remember what i did but i definitely drank a little too much mm-hmm. and i was maybe 15 16 mm-hmm. at that event in taj lands and and then the crew got very pissed off at me that you are underage you're drinking and there's a big pr mm-hmm. launch and uh, that's the first time i also ended up seeing that how foods wasted in these five stars and everything mm-hmm. so i thought of an idea but again did not work out but yeah no entrepreneurial stints except this one but in college festivals i was always in for fundraising uh and everything creative right like mm-hmm. poetry was my strong goal so i used to write poems do you still write yeah i do i do write sometimes when i'm overwhelmed with emotions I write it. Or it is a comfort zone. Not a comfort zone. It's my uh, exploratory zone, right? If you leave me alone, I'll write a poem, right? Mm. That's that's like a home thing. But yeah, so college NMIMS was was a tough survival. I but I still I made my best friend over there. Uh yeah, only like if you ask me if I have a good like do you have any friends from your college? I just have one, like from my class. It's mm-hmm. a class of thirty, and you expect all of them to be friends with each. Of course, as friendly with everyone. But now, if I want to pick up the phone and call, like I have maybe three or four, and only one I'm in touch with on a day-to-day basis. From what I know about you, hmm. after college, you went for a solo trip to Europe. Yeah, <laughs> it's not a solo trip to Europe. This I was straight after the NMS. No. So. I worked for one year. Nobody was so gonna give me. We were me talking about your startup. No, so after after I graduated, I got such low marks. Uh-huh. I really wondered what do I have to do with my life. But I knew that I was I was pretty creative, and this is the time, you know, I had also convinced my parents that hey, you know what, creativity me kuch karunga. I don't want to do regular job options. My dad, in his last attempt, ended up finding something in the newspaper. and again right like we we lived in a very small 1 bhk converted into a 2 bhk six of us staying under one roof so you know topic was always of discussion ki umkar kai karna is to right <laughs> umkar what are you going to do ahead so he got a newspaper cutting there was this uh, ad <laughs> this is damn funny there's this ad of a company which were recruiting management trainees and the compensation was very high mm-hmm. and um i said dad i don't want to go and work for all this right i want to i want to explore i want to travel whatever whatever but like unka just go and give the exam now i went and i gave the exam because i saw the name of the company was lin mm mm-hmm. and me i don't know why my wife is going to hear this anyway but the girl i was <laughs> dating that time <laughs> she was a big fan of lind chocolates okay? uh-huh. and every time fire I, chocolates ha huh? fire chocolates really good chocolates yeah. right and there's this one called lindor okay mm-hmm. so every time i had to meet her or whatever i had to take these lindor chocolates right or every time <laughs> i goofed up that i had to take this lindor chocolate mm-hmm. i'm like ki bas yaar i'll get the bloody job unlimited lind <laughs> <laughs> Lin chocolates. So I gave. I give the exam first time I studied. Okay, I gave the exam. I ace the exam. Then they ask me to come down to Kolkata, and uh, first time somebody else is sponsoring my flight. Right, I land over there. They send us cars to pick up. They put us up in a beautiful hotel. Not a hotel. They put us up in a beautiful heritage club mm-hmm. in Kolkata, and. Eyes on the prize, right? Like Lin chocolates. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they had flown down hundred people, out of which they were only gonna select fifteen, mm. right? But for the first round, the first hundred people may say for the second final interview they were thirty, mm-hmm. which were gonna get selected. I aced it. I I was 
ऑन द टॉप ऑफ माई गेम मेरे को चॉकलेट चाहिए yeah, मेरे को चॉकलेट कंपनी में काम चाहिए आई एम लाइक एनी थिंग इन टेक्स राइट बट ओवर हियर आई जस्ट डेल यू समथिंग वॉट आई रियलाइज अबाउट माई सेल्फ आई एम टॉकिंग वेन द सिचुएशन अराइज इज ना आई डोट नो समथिंग हैपन दैन आई ई स्टेट राइट लाइक I don't know. I I become a very different type of an Omkar when I have this eyes on prize, where, and I've won quite a few times in life, right? Mm-hmm. Beat like rank one or something, and uh, beat winning like multi hundred k grants and everything. Have you seen this movie called Over the Top? No. It's a Sylvester Stallone movie. In that movie, is like he wears a cap throughout. So when he cap ko jab wo ulta karta na, it's his alter ego. Yeah. Yeah. There's a switch. Yeah. And when that switch is on like yeah. whatever he wants he does that so. Yeah, exactly, right? Mm-hmm. And and this happens rare, okay? Mm-hmm. Like it's like Haley's comet. Mm-hmm. But I don't know what animal went into me that day I killed it. Next day at the interview I am all getting prepped up the night before that I make a lot of good friends. One of that friends still continues to be my very close friend. We drink our ass out in Kolkata. <laughs> and we wake up next day in a hangover but still lies on the prize before <laughs> someone tells me ki umkar you don't have a background in petroleum engineering how are you going to ace it i'm like ye kya bakchori kar raha hai yaar what are you talking about <laughs> it turned out to be an oil and gas manufacturing company it's not lind <laughs> it is linde so you it has the same <laughs> logo but the t and the e is different and in excitement i had overlooked everything shit Right, <laughs> but I ace the interview. I ace the interview. I get a very good package, uh-huh. and then I come back to Bombay, and I see all my animals friends again, and everybody is wondering what would this guy end up doing? What would this guy? <laughs> Turns out I got the highest package in my class. <laughs> I was barred from my placement because of my low CGPA. Oh, damn and they like your your cgp is too low nobody is gonna like they put the cut off higher than my cgp mm-hmm. so they said that my cgp was like 2.62 mm. so anybody below 2.7 or 2.8 mm. are not eligible this was like a personal <laughs> to you yeah like very very subtle one right mm-hmm. and and my professors unfortunately they were they never liked me because i was mm-hmm. always like a a troublemaker uh, yeah like i i think i cheated once in my exam also so they called my parents so they never really liked me and after cheating i'm not apologizing i'm actually saying why is this a stupid thing to study right <laughs> so they got all the more pissed at me they are like tune pehle cheat kiya fir uske baad hum log ko sikha raha instead of apologizing so it was done and dusted but suddenly i started seeing my face on a few promos for the program that our student ended up getting <laughs> this package i'm like So I worked in Kolkata for one year, one of the mm-hmm. better years of my life. Did you break up with Lin? I broke up with the Lin girl. <laughs> That was a hard one. <laughs> yeah, I got dumped. I got. <laughs> And the problem was long. I realized long distance don't work. Mm. But that time in Kolkata was brilliant, right? It was my first shot at like living alone with my friends. So they selected fifteen management trainees from different parts of the world, uh, different parts of the country. Uh, we were given like top tier treatment. Every match at Eden Gardens, I had like top seats. Damn! I saw Sachin's one ninety ninth, one ninety ninth, no, which is the second last test, uh-huh. right? Uh, I saw so many Mohan Bagan matches. Right, I was on the you know workout, then work on great salary. The rent in Kolkata is cheaper, and everywhere I was traveling in India, until my first assignment where they sent me to like uh, rural Bengal, and rural Bengal is a different scene altogether. Oh, I want to tell you a funny story you wanted, no? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Damn funny story. So during Diwali, they said that all the management trainees should. choose a um a social cause i'm like yes right my partner ends up doing a social cause uh, where he's putting like this bleach in the bottle and then if you go kolkata if you've not been it's a very poor city right mm-hmm. like people live in real real difficult conditions right no electricity nothing at all so he's putting a bulb i'm like you know what i want to do real impact so i'm like fuck you guys 
आई एम गोइंग टू ट्रांसफॉर्म सोना गाची यू नो वॉट इज सोना गाची सोना गाची इज एशिया लार्जेस्ट रेड लाइट डिस्ट्रिक्ट I knew that my mother also watches the podcast. Yes. So, yes. so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I want to change this, right? So, there's this beautiful NGO which I signed up with, which was called Apni Ap Women Worldwide, and they work in this red light districts to provide better um, employment opportunities for um, for the sex workers. Mm-hmm. So the first time I went over there, full tushan me, <laughs> and I I used to work out and stuff, and like you know, confidence was at mm. some different level. Mm. That twenty thirteen, twenty fourteen mm. was a different animal only, right? And uh, I go over there, and then I'm talking to all these. The first time I'm in a red light district mm. area, and it's fascinating, right? The way people <laughs> live. Right, like this is like a first time experience where you are literally looking at menu cards of like sexual services What? offered, and you know you just like really, really like you know plight of people. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, how can I train them? Mm. I had a brilliant idea. Okay, boss, I will teach everybody computer skills. Mm. Right? So, अपने आप women worldwide had a office inside Sonagachi. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, give me one room. I will set up computer centers and everything. And I started doing preparation and everything. Second day I went, third day I went, fourth day I went. I'm planning. I'm creating the curriculum, everything. I started talking with the sex workers, telling them the importance, everything. Also, like, came to know how safe and secure environments we are from. They're all, uh, you know, human traffic from Bangladesh, from mm. Nepal predominantly, mm. and. Uh, for day i go over there with my backpack and everything and i come out of the office walk about maybe 50 100 meters in the narrow lanes because the metro station was nearby one guy comes and slaps on the back of my like over here and punge it took me like a minute or something and then i look back he slaps me again and and then he had three four people next to him and he's like if you come here again we're going to shoot you and he's talking to me like with with my uh, with his hands on my collar i have never been so scared <laughs> <laughs> and you know i look at all these people around and i'm like somebody should help me somebody should help me i started understanding a little bit of bengali i have a bengali tattoo in my back also mm-hmm. right so i started understanding bengali a little bit and i started realizing acha hua acha hua after <laughs> that and like shit i'm not very welcome over here I wrote to अपने आप विभिन्न वर्ल्ड वाइड की इफ देर एन ऑपरचुनिटी टू डू रिमोटली आई कैन कम टू वर्क सो आई डिड वट एवर करिकुलम टू दैम एंड बट दैट्स द टाइम माई रियलाइज है लाइक चेंजिंग द वर्ल्ड इज सो ब्लडी डिफिकल्ट एंड नो नो बडी लाइक यू नो दे आई एम प्रेटी श्योर दे वॉज सो एंग्री दे वो गन किल मी राइट इफ आई वॉज एनी ओल्डर दे वुड हैव किल मी आई वॉज बेली लाइक ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी टू Right, so and all this because of chocolates. All this because of chocolates. Tabi to chocolate, wo abhi to naya calling aaya tha ki, bhai, main transform karunga. I was daydreaming. Everybody mm. like you know how Mother Teresa transformed. <laughs> I'll transform Sona Gachi. First, I'll start with computers, right, and then I'll also open the gym. Usko utopia bana ke chodunga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, wo utopia to kafi logo ka hai hi wo vaise, right? But yeah. those lanes and everything the darkest lane of mm. of the world not even of asia or country so i'm like ki chodo kolkata was slow kolkata was fun because i was a bachelor i was mm-hmm. living with such great people um people should spend some time in kolkata there's a place called park street over there there's mm-hmm. a place called oli pub recently i was in kolkata i went to kolkata after 10 years i cried when i went to that place the kind of Why what you get in this place called Oli Pub? अभी थोड़ा fancy हो गया तभी तो AC वैसे भी नहीं था. Right? It's you know Janta in Bandra West. Yes. Or Gokul. It's yes, on steroids. Yes. Oli Pub is <laughs> Janta Pro Max. Damn. Right. And you'll have all these creative people talking about music, about arts, culture, yeah. literature. Everybody just joins tables. You're having conversation. There these random ass beers you've never heard of. Right? Like I still remember there's something called Thunderbird. <laughs> Thunderbolt, Godfather, <laughs> one big bottle and you are out. Right. 
has crazy days right in park street uh, then there was esplanade all these places so yeah then after nmms i went to kolkata when did you go to europe your big trip my big trip to europe so kolkata should be told i was asked to leave the organization <laughs> right they had a lot of high hopes from me but i did not succeed and plus my manager he did not quite like me is what i think mm. um so around that time my friend had started his footwear company desi hangover and i was actively helping him out and around the same time there's an opportunity to go to romania mm-hmm. right so i hopped on to a plane went to romania got feedback about this you know this footwear is brilliant it's well received and i spent quite some time in romania i was working over there as an intern uh, as a travel journalist as somebody who used to click photographs again i used to write poetry for romanian tourism department mm-hmm. the idea was the name of the project was explore romania beyond dracula because romania is like a poor country mm-hmm. in europe and the recall value what they have is dracula ke hey, this is the land of dracula mm. a bullshit it's a land of dracula is some idiot american went to romania wrote a book called dracula so they thought dracula is from romania dracula is actually the name of an emperor called vlad the impaler Mm. right so he was like shivaji of romania <laughs> to usko dracula bana diya right? so anyways romania was the best time i think of my life till date um i was with an international set of people 30 35 of us what was your parents reaction to all this you going to kolkata you going to romania kolkata mein maine paisa kamaya tha aur to takleef ne ha so i'm like i'm yeah. going on my own terms mm. right and uh, jo hoga dekha jayega yaar and i was also very keen about uh, the footwear company and joined in as the co-founder desi hango desi hango right so it was it was very uh, riveting right it was the first time also ever i was out of india and uh, before that in college when i used to hear my friends oh i'm going to us i'm going to uk i used to feel a little jealous that or i can't afford mm. to even like go outside and whatever but that then i again i realized that i don't want to go to mainstream places so i've gone to the remotest corners of the world like europe no how many countries have you traveled till that i don't know, like 20 25 30 it like actually i have a tattoo from every country <laughs> right every country which is memorable right so uh, every country which is memorable i make sure that i get a tattoo so yeah so europe trip happened that time <laughs> then i came back and then um, the dutch consulate in mumbai hosted a competition mm. and they had to the when the competition was you have to make a 15 second video about why do you want to go study in the netherlands mm. i don't want to go study in the netherlands <laughs> but i wanted to go to netherlands and it was a fully paid trip right and plus you get money <laughs> to go to netherlands for free <laughs> i gave it all. again that animal came right the the cap slip <laughs> right I wrote a rap. Uh-huh. I rapped in front of the consulate general, <laughs> right? Like something eating Reuters can't get better. I I was talking about like you know how I'm big. I don't know jack shit about like Ajax and Feyenoord and all this, but I'm like I'm a Ajax fan. Uh-huh. Robin van Persie, <laughs> Rude van Nistelrooy. Actually, I like Rude Nistelrooy. So I gave that rap. It was a beautiful video. I won a trip and uh, fully funded. I end up in the Netherlands and boom, I am solo traveling across Netherlands. I'm going every university. Uh, after that, I'm like, you know what? Let's go next to us. So I go to Belgium. As all maybe twenty two, and I extend that trip. I go to Belgium. After Belgium, I go to Portugal, and all solo traveling, backpacking, uh, hitchhiking. So many things I've done here, yeah. like. bloody I, i still remember i slept for two nights at the the grand central in paris uh, i used to willingly yes i missed the train uh-huh. uh and then you know the cab guys were way too expensive in the night and there was no public transport mm-hmm. the next train was at 8 am in the morning so might as well right? i have done jack shit right like i have slept at a holocaust site like uh-huh. crazy <laughs> 
there's this uh, this is much later but there's this place i forgot the name it's in uh, lithuania i am in lithuania i i love history i not not this trip like maybe mm-hmm. 10 years ago 8 years ago i'm in lithuania i forgot the name of the place it's it was a holocaust site uh, about 80000 uh, people died over there 60000 jews 20000 soviet red army soldiers and uh, I go over there, and uh, you know, I like sitting over there, getting inspiration, writing poetry. I've written my best poems in in. Were my... you alone, Tavi? Yeah, yeah, alone. I've only traveled alone before. Until I got married, I only traveled the world alone, not with friends. I make friends when I'm over there, and then when I'm writing the poem, it got so deep, it went into pages, pages, pages. I forgot that you know it's turning sunset and whatever, whatever, and uh, the last train left, back to Vilnius. and i have no way of actually going and then they shut it from outside like the gates and everything they overlooked <laughs> me maybe i was too dark buggers did not <laughs> spot me and i abhi kya kare yaar fuck I, i don't know how i survived that night and it was very cold but again i'm like you know what so i'm sitting uh, on the cart where they used to mm. like move all the dead bodies right there was this remains of of a uh, you know for for the prisoners of war to stay so i'm like over there and then i don't know then i slept off on that bench i wake up next day in the morning the guard thinks that i'm a fucking ghost right <laughs> the guard thinks i'm fucking <laughs> so he first puts a stick at me speak something in lithuanian i'm like <laughs> <laughs> the longest night of my life uh-huh. and uh, oh, i forgot the name of the site yeah but yeah so yeah i, I i've traveled europe extensively and most importantly alone were you broke tabi when in uh, when you during this trip lithuania lithuania no. was recent right like 8 oh. years ago this is like we're talking 10 years ago i am talking about romania times no i had savings from the chocolate <laughs> i had good savings very good money so uh, and plus life in kolkata but like i did not have like i could survive for 3 months 3 months 3 months 3 months right then i used to do a lot of freelancing gigs write for websites copywriting my all my internships have been in copywriting in college so yeah i was not broke but i was not like rich right like i was i still remember i always had like 15000 rupees mm mm-hmm. Just in case, right? And any good party needs two thousand rupees. So I seven times I could party, and one thousand for the <laughs> cab back. So yeah. Uh, when did you meet your lovely wife? Like, what's the story behind that? Ah, oh, Kate. I saw the proposal on YouTube. It's beautiful. Yeah, no. Very yeah. romantic man you are. Yeah, yeah. Got to be man. Russians <laughs> have high standards. <laughs> Otherwise, they meet. <laughs> 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 I met my wife at a beautiful park in Vidinka. It's called Vidinka in Moscow. Mm-hmm. I was very fit and handsome that time, so I used to go for runs mm-hmm. in the evening. Last time I don't remember where I've been for a run. I see this blonde girl and a brunette uh, right outside, and uh, they call me over and they're like, "Can you take a photograph?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure. Come take a photograph with me." Then I'm like, "No, weirdo. We want a." <laughs> <laughs> you want to click a photo of us so i'm like i take the cam and i'm clicking the photo i'm like wait this feels a little weird i am the foreigner over here i should be asking you for photos why are you asking for photos mm-hmm. you seem to be locals over here they're like no we're not from moscow we're from st petersburg and then i'm like mm, i'm planning to visit st petersburg <laughs> The cost of this photo is an evening walk in Saint Petersburg. They're like, yeah, 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 sure, right. So I'm like, number exchange. They're like, Instagram. I'm like, okay, right. And then uh, I don't know. Then I traveled across Russia for next two three months. I was in South. I was in Far East. Everywhere I've traveled in Russia, like remotest corner. And then I'm going. Then I still remember, you know, twenty. 20 when did covid happen 2020 no 2020 best year of my life like i hate to say it a lot of people will call it the worst it was the best year of my life i traveled far and wide i had the best experiences of my life 
and then in 2021 i i was working on beehive's idea mm-hmm. right my my last startup but you know in moscow it was always a party somebody's calling bro come over uh, during the day we are just like chilling composing music doing all the random shit but like working as technically a student that time then i like i want to be inspired so my friend said that you know you should go to st petersburg it's the most ins- that's where all the creative artists are so i'm like okay i identify myself as an artist i go to st pete's um and then i remember oh i had met this girl so i text her that hey you know what you want to you want to chill and it's 31st 30th of december 29th of december i still remember she's like sure and uh, we go to a mongolian restaurant and i order like a pro because i've been over there right and then she's like wow when did you go over there and i'm like yeah <laughs> great flex get the booza get this guriatia whatever and then we started meeting more frequently and how long were you there in russia mm-hmm. about 18 months almost two years like just exploring russia or was this a uh, work thing i was studying Achha. your phd yes it was a masters integrated into a phd i was supposed to go to italy mm-hmm. covid happened netherlands and then italy covid happened nothing happened but i met kate and uh, in st petersburg i started focusing a lot on my idea beehive mm-hmm. i started working on it very much then we got some investments some venture capitalists invested in us and then i'm like shit shit's got real now <laughs> right people i'm just not like kind of ideating and talking at places but like people are putting a significant amount of money to see this go live so then i decided to lock stock barrel come back to india and i thought kate was just like a small uh like a small duration relationship mm-hmm. right like kate was actually the first girl i was living in with Damn. right and i thought she was living in with me out of love but she was living in with me out of compulsion mm-hmm. she had a schizophrenic neighbor who used to annoy the hell out of her uh-huh. so she's like wait i'm seeing this guy his house is good i had a beautiful house in st petersburg his house is good let me start staying with this guy <laughs> and i'm like wow this girl is really did you know me. this then no <laughs> she's like but because I, i'm like wow i'm such a charmer within like two <laughs> weeks she wants to start living in with me uh-huh. right and i little did i know that she's more than happy because she doesn't have to face those weirdos <laughs> right like i'll stay with somebody who's less mm-hmm. of a weirdo so i came back and then i don't know we we kind of lost touch for some time because i got deep into fundraising for beehive building the new product and but we were still in touch we used to like whatsapp maybe once every day once twice every day and uh, i was supposed to go back to meet her but my visa expired so i told her that i cannot come and she really felt bad and she was really hoping i would come another time i thought that you know she really like wanted me to come and like spend time together and this she's not also looking at this as something very casual mm. so i dropped the bomb at home right my, very surprisingly actually not surprisingly my parents are chill that way they're like yeah 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 i can't i can't say racist things right now on the podcast mm-hmm. but they were happy with my choice <laughs> right so uh, we decided that if this relationship has to be serious it doesn't have to be like all jovial because our life in st petersburg was very simple we used to wake up in the morning i used to go for a run she used to go to her office evening she used to come we used to watch a movie have coffee and you know just live an amazing mm. amazing life but that was just very hunky dory so we are like let's really experience how would we be in stressful situations everything so we came up with a plan let's travel together so we traveled to southern part of russia which is a place called ossetia Mm-hmm. Like dangerous place. There's another place which we, the most dangerous place, not even bloody in Russia and the world. It's called Chechnya. You mm-hmm. know Chechnya? Heard of it? Chechnyans are yeah, really dangerous. We sweet but dangerous people. So we traveled, and then throughout the whole travel experience, we realized that yeah, I think if we can survive this trip, we can survive. Kuch to hai. Yeah. Yeah. And um, 
then i came back and then i told my dad that hey you know what i traveled with her my dad is super chill and i think she's the one so my dad like invite her it's my 60th birthday next week <laughs> oh shit so i tell her that can you come down she takes a leave from her work she flies down dad's 60th birthday we are all confused and you know a lot of people show up at our house now we had a bigger house in villaparle so everybody just came and then he's like oh who's this girl is this omka is is this omka is and i'm like you know what let's not complicate it like kid let's just say you're my fiance right you can't say i'm a girlfriend because mm. there are a lot of people in my family who have a conservative thought so yeah and then my dad is like but where will we stay in a 2 bhk over mm-hmm. there also there's a huge terrace but 2 bhk so my dad's like um she will sleep in your room you sleep in the hall i like that bullshit yeah we've been living together mm-hmm. right like what what's going <laughs> to happen like relax right so uh, first 5 7 days i used to sleep in the hall eight day i'm like fuck it i don't care i want to sleep in my nice ac room <laughs> <laughs> uh so on uh, 26th or no 22nd of december 2021 um uh, i was in aurangabad for my ex co-founder's wedding and i had created a book so if you've seen the video yeah. she's reading a book so the book it's has it's very it's very sweet yeah so the book has all the story of us mm. except the end except the end and the mm. end end page is like do you want to continue the story if so come to this this spot so she comes to that spot and then i have like this big gesture on the back end i had mm. called my best friend i'm like bro keep the tickets booked for delhi to moscow Mumbai to Delhi, Delhi. Mm-hmm. If she says no, Aurangabad, Mumbai, Mumbai, Delhi, Delhi, Moscow. Paka paka, <laughs> paka paka means bye bye, <laughs> right? But yes, yeah, she said yes. Uh, I wanted to actually bloody propose her in Udaipur. We had gone mm. to Udaipur at my for my friend's wedding, and Udaipur is damn romantic, mm. right? So I thought I forgot the name Jagannath or whatever that. you know there's a palace inside the lake mm-hmm. uh i'm like great place to propose grand gesture all mm-hmm. this shit so i had carried the ring and everything and had hired these photographers videographers because i wanted to like capture this moment right uh, so oh, three hours before they are like sir there is a shortfall in a wedding over here so they are paying us double can you match it otherwise we won't mm. come तो मैं बोला इतना पैसा तो नहीं यार आई वाज अ फाउंडर दैट टाइम सो आई एम लाइक कि छोड़ो सो देन आई हैड टू प्रपोज बिकॉज़ शी वाज लिविंग इन लाइक 2 डेज और 3 डेज या दैट्स हाउ आई मेट माय वाइफ हाउ डिड यू गो फ्रॉम दिस लाइक स्टार्टअप्स एंड ऑल टू टीचिंग इन अ यूनिवर्सिटी इन बॉम्बे आई मेट डॉक्टर शानी बाय एक्सीडेंट आई वाज बिल्डिंग माय सेकंड स्टार्टअप कॉल्ड स्किल स्ट्रीट now was the love of my life that that startup if i get the bandwidth again i'll rebuild it i love that whole concept and um and dr shani saw me pitch once in like you should come talk to my students you know classic her and uh, i'm like yeah sure so i came and the students gave a good response so she's like umka can you also talk to the teachers about um, importance of being entrepreneurship and i'm like yeah sure and then i started and i was broke right uh because i'd come back from europe i had left dc hangover and i was working on this new idea skill street i was barely like surviving on 1500 rupees 2000 rupees per month my family financial situation was also very bad that time but still i was like bloody hell let me take the risk so uh, she said that you know i really like the way you like deliver sessions you should do it more often so Dr. Shani launched something called ISDI, Indian School of Art Design School. The first visiting lecturer over there, uh, and then I'm like, realize like, hey, no shit, dude. Like, you're pretty like at the risk of sounding a little arrogant. I'm like, hey, this is this is my thing. It comes effortlessly, right? Like, I don't have to put in extra efforts, whatever, whatever. And I did not know how big a name Dr. Shani was that time, right? Like I knew she was the principal of HR college, but the kind of people she was getting every day, 
I think that was fascinating, right? Because of her, I could meet like the rubbing shoulders with the best folks in the world, right? Forget India and the world. Uh, unfortunately, my startup did not take off, and she's like, join mm. full time. So I joined. My title was very nice. It was called Entrepreneurship Evangelist, mm-hmm. and uh, I was very young when I started teaching. I was twenty four, twenty twenty four. I was teaching kids who are. Like kids were, they were like bloody hell. They were twenty one, twenty two, right? But I was able to develop such a great relationship with them, and finally started, you know, finding my not calling, but something which I'm exceedingly good at, mm-hmm. right? And everybody told me that Omkar, you're a natural at this, so you should double click, double down on this. And I started teaching in twenty sixteen to twenty nineteen. And best years of my life again. Three years teaching at ISME, ISDI. I had a lot of fun. Built that entire institution along with one of the best teams I've worked with. Right, like really passionate about making a world class B school. And this was back in twenty fifteen, twenty sixteen. And uh, yeah, so teaching came very naturally to me. And uh, like classroom is my playground. Right, I can. I can say that you, your lectures are amazing. Okay, so the f- first time I was in your lecture, I'm like, why is this guy teaching? Like, mm. in the most respectful way, like this guy could do so much more. Then I asked people around and like came to know stories, and I'm like, okay, this guy has done some stuff in life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is this is like there's this problem with with me and a lot of people, right? Like you indulge in a lot of. Over expectation of yourself, and because of which you're perennially unhappy. Mm-hmm. And I count myself as that kind of a person, right? Because I always think that Omkar, you can do much better. You can do much better. You can do much better, right? And it's not an imposter syndrome. It's just the pursuit of like something which is very, like which which seems very achievable, but you're not doing it for reasons unknown. So yeah, it just keeps you unhappy. And I'm still unhappy that I'm like shit. You know what? My next company, I want to make it a bloody bigger than Nvidia, right? And until I not make it bigger than Nvidia or bigger than Meta, I'm not going to be ha- happy. Even though other people are like, "Nee, bhai, acha kya hai tune?" What's the biggest check you have seen? Like, I won't ask you the exact number, but some range. A million plus, yeah. <laughs> Damn. Mm. And uh, what are you working on right now? So I met this guy called Vijay when I was working in the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. Fun guy tells me that he's building something called uh, e-workers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like interesting. We go out for bowling. We go out for some snacks, and then he's talking a lot of sense. Um, I had a very nice advisor. I still continue to have an advisor, right? You know what? I want to give some gyan this time before I tell the story. You know. This whole concept of mentors is like bloody flawed, okay? Because mentors are over romanticized, mm-hmm. right? And mentors are not the kind of people who you talk on a day to day basis, right? If you have a mentor who you talk to a day to day basis, it's brilliant, amazing. I haven't had a mentor who I'm able to talk to a day to day basis. But I have mentors who I can just like pick up the phone in terms of crisis and call, and all they do is listen. They don't even give advice. right they just listen and all they do is that they empathize with my problem now these mentors like you know as i'm speaking i'm thinking of a couple of the biggest names in the industry who my mentors are they'll just listen and they'll empathize when they empathize you realize that hey you know what your tro- problem somebody else is able to understand at that level and they said that they've been through something similar like this and they survived mm So all you want to know in the terms of crisis is that you will survive. You don't want to get advice and whatever. This mentor, he's my mentor. She's my mentor. It's such a like it's an over abused word, right? For me, this. So I had a mentor over here. Again, I'm. I don't remember the last time I spoke to him was like maybe October last year, twenty twenty three October. Mm-hmm. I spoke to him, right? And I met him for breakfast maybe four months ago when he was in Mumbai. That's it, right? But I still know he's my mentor. He was a mentor to Vijay as well, the co-founder of this new startup. 
and uh, once i left my previous organization and i pre- uh, my previous startup beehive i left in a very uh, bad state i had a split with my co-founders we had a massive disagreements and then it was very difficult to even consume the fact that the startup which you ideated build it from scratch your own team is asking you to like hey this is not working steve out steve jobs moment a garibo ka steve jobs <laughs> <laughs> right so it hurt me right it it hurt me massively right that was one of the worst phases of my life as well but um over here he's like this is a new startup why don't you have a look at it so i was working with this startup it's called superwitty ai um we build ai agents uh ai agents in simple terms is like ai which does the work for you right now we all use chat gpt mm-hmm. open ai whatever gemini you just type in something and it gives you a response mm. but imagine that you know there might be an ai agent for this uh this podcast right mm-hmm. where i just type in that hey you know what this podcast is 1 hour long identify the best part of it export it in this particular file and send it to omkar for his approval and also uh, you know color correct it mm-hmm. this is a prompt the ai will do it for you mm-hmm. right the ai exactly knows what to do these are ai agents so we build ai agents we build ai agents for the us army uses our ai agents us navy uses ai agents state of louisiana uses our ai agents a uh, bmc in mumbai will start using our ai agents congratulations yeah that's a so i think ai agents is fundamentally going to change the way we work like i honestly think i think studies are useless mm. completely useless everybody just should l- just learn how can we interact with ai how can mm-hmm. we leverage ai that's all what needs to be learned application of ai right it's not about knowledge consumption anymore new knowledge creation sab aisa bhari bhari bolte hain no new knowledge is going to get created by humans it's all going to be create ai created you open linkedin half the posts are bloody yeah, ai created yeah. i know professors who have mm-hmm. written books after books which are like bloody chat gpt books right so any names No, you, you just open up right like uh across right i to bloody if i want to start dissing i'll start dissing the indian <laughs> academic system also right you know professors firstly most of the places are so underpaid so when they are underpaid they try to find other places for respite and these are essentially you know I don't know yeah like no good quality research is indian academia producing right of course you have the iits and salute to them they have the best profs out there iits again for me iits are more research institutions than like teaching institutions right if you go to a, if you talk to an iit kid of course he'll say i had a couple of good professors but iit is able to give that output because they curate a lot baki jagah na sala it's become like a bloody uh, money making business where anybody and everybody is going to get a phd by just either paying money or chat gpting their entire thesis out and the whole essence of doing some deep research like what do you say when you when you've done your phd it's like you have deep deep expertise mm. in a particular subject because of which you've been able to create new knowledge and that new knowledge is validated and that is the knowledge you go inside the class and teach none of the universities b schools are doing that and the quality you know, i i hate it when i see mediocre professors and mediocre students right but the problem is that the professors a lot of times don't realize that they are responsible for the economic growth the gdp of the country for the next 3 years next 5 years if i teach shit in my class this kid is not going to be able to get a job or even if he does get a job imagine what application he is going to do yeah mm. so it's it's a chicken and a egg story that you don't have great students because you don't have great professors you don't have great professors because the education system is flawed it's a rat race rat race is and ai is going to kill all the rats in the rat race it's a race against people and ai speaking of startups previously How do you know when, like, okay, this shit is not working? Let's pull the plug. No, I'm not a. I I I never pull the plug. No. I. 
I have I I don't remember the last. Is that something I, sentimental? No, it's not. I have a sunk cost fallacy. You understand sunk cost fallacy? No. Sunk cost fallacy is that you know when you invest some amount of time into a particular thing, you might as well finish it, even though the chances of that giving you any kind of a meaningful return are are low. Let me think of an example, right? Sunk cost fallacy. अभी इतना दूर आ ही गए हैं तो थोड़ा और जाते हैं, right? What is that sunk cost? अभी इतना दूर आ ही गया है that is sunk cost fallacy. I was sunk cost. अभी इतना काम कर दिया है तो देखते हैं आगे push करते हैं. That's number one. Number two is that I have seen people get second wins. You like second wins is like coming from back from death, right? Like not like in this Ranveer Alawadiya ke aur ab like from a from a business perspective, right? Uh-huh. Like their business was gonna fail but they radically came back. Right, so they touched death and they came back. I believe it, yeah. And plus, if you pursue an idea long enough, it's gonna succeed. So whatever, like you do whatever. You sell that zippers, that muka mask on Shark Tank. Everybody <laughs> make fun of it. It'll end up working, yeah. Like, huh? Yeah, okay. Yeah, no. that belly button zipper. Huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you see, there's a market for everything as long yeah. as you're perseverant, right? Like. I don't pull pull plugs on things. Right. Who's the most famous person you have met, and who's like the most famous contact on your phone? Hmm, what a typical <laughs> cliche question. When we started this podcast, no, <clears throat> you are one of the first people we wanted to get. <clears throat> But we are like, abhi utna okad nahi hai. Like oh, after man. after doing something, we'll get him. What hyping, ah? Huh? <laughs> this is all facts. I am not buttering you up or anything, and. We were like, अब ये सवाल किसको पूछ सकते हैं ओमकार के सिवा किसी को नहीं पूछ सकते सो आर एन इंटरक्शन विद द दलाई लामा राइट सो दैट वॉज दैट वॉज वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट मोमेंट्स ऑफ माई लाइफ ऑल दो राइट नाउ आई नो आई थिंक इज बिकम टू ओल्ड बिकॉज इज नाउ not in the zone he's he's speaking a lot of controversial thing or well, he's speaking things which i don't agree with but yeah uh, i had the opportunity of meeting him having a very small interaction with him uh, who else is the most famous person like really powerful person i've I have, seen you tag nikhil nikitin i bullshit. Story. i i had a cup of tea with pratibha patel right you know pratibha patel i'll pretend Pratibha Patel was the president of India in uh, 2008 Damn. to 2012. So I went to uh, her, the president's office. My uncle, my late uncle, he was uh, one of the biggest photographers uh, India had seen. And uh, by the way, through him I had met Abdul Kalam also, but not like met met him, but I like. like this <laughs> right abdul kalam is my inspiration mm-hmm. right like it's he's a legend if i am able to achieve in 1% what abdul kalam has had impact on the country i'll consider my life successful so pratibha patel is the famous abhi no famous nahi but that time a president, president of india Come president yeah. of india spent 15 minutes with her uh, introduced myself told them i'm very passionate about poetry <laughs> i still have a nice photograph And this buzz cut that time I had to remove my ear <laughs> piercings from everything. My mom is sitting the night before <laughs> trying to remove my piercings. Right, I was trying to wear a blazer for the first time in my life, and um, I got an opportunity to meet her. So yeah, that was that was pretty good. One of the most wholesome LinkedIn posts I have ever seen is you posting about your dad when he came to college and how he felt. Yeah. How was that for you? I think I have a very special relationship with my father. I get very ang- I get I I hope he listens to this. Um I get angry at him very quickly, but also at the same time I care for him like beyond, right? But while growing up, no, I've I I still diss him, right? Because I wanted to be an archaeologist and mm. you know because you know he had other plans for me. Uh but in retrospect, I did not turn out as bad, right? Like, okay, I'm I'm able to take care of myself. I'm I'm 32 now. So I think for my father, he came from a very uh, both my parents, right? My mother was born in a the most rural uh, villages in Maharashtra. 
my father grew up in a family of like eight people living in a one bhk uh my mother family of nine living in a one room chawl kind of a system right so they both came from like really humble background most most time of my childhood i was like textbook lower middle class maharashtrian family right so when when you are as a that part of the sect of the society that part of the segment of the society you are very risk averse mm. right you you take a lot of predictable decisions like like i i keep on talking about this a lot like being risky is a very like ability to take a risk is completely dependent on how rich you are or how privileged you are so when my father came like you know he sat over there and then he's like okay my my sons kind of respected out over here because at family gatherings and everything i'm the clown right i'm i'm mm-hmm. pulling everybody's legs mm-hmm. i'm just like doing all kind of stupid jokes on everyone so um yeah i think uh, sometimes you you do realize right like there are going to be like you know every your parents are approaching that age where that they are on a reverse clock right so it's about maximizing one of the reasons why i'm again in mumbai i came back to mumbai is so that i could maximize my time with with my parents so and he's retired now right like and he's looking out for like all these you know new things he's also like omkari ai ka astare mala zara sang ki he agents wagere to bolto what are exactly these ai agents so yeah i think that relationship with my father is very uh, Like we're we're very similar people, right? I just I'm, you know, I'm my father's name is Paresh Pandar Kame. I'm the Paresh Pandar Kame who took risks, mm. right? He was not in a position to take risks. Thanks to him, I'm able to take risks. We have the same traits, right? We are as unorganized as each other, right? We are as, you know, on the positive side, he's very flamboyant. I think I'm fairly flamboyant. um he's very charming i my wife says i'm charming so <laughs> uh you know there are a lot of similarities right we uh, we are we always forget like money matters we don't know where our money is right so i, I just realize i'm like very much like him but i'm just happy that like i'll give you an example okay we were just comparing our early earnings <laughs> it turned out to be exactly the same when he was 60 to when i was 31 right and he's fairly successful right he's he's fairly fairly successful and he was like super proud that omka you're earning as much money annually as much as i did now as i'm double of your age right so i'm like yeah because i took more risks than you and then that's where he told me that you know it was not that you were not allowed to take risk you you had this whole rebel instinct in you that's why you took risks and if i would have taken the risk i would have been like 20 times your net worth bro <laughs> so yeah this episode is like very special for us because 9 months ago when we started this podcast me and ayush the editor like people see me people know me hmm. me and ayush started this podcast together we were two of us now we have a team of Six. Five, six, so it's now me, Ayush, Shubham, Sai Shubham, Dia, Sharan, Shubham and Sai Shubham are different Sam- people. Yes, they are different people. Dia, Sanvi, Samrit, Sharan, and when we started this, we never thought that we'll reach this level. That we would do something like this with you. I'm not buttering you at all, but like after this after is, having <laughs> a drink with me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is all facts. So this means a lot. This was a very fire conversation. Yeah, but yeah. I hope you got what. Yeah, like I was super candid. Yes, yes, you were super candid. Hmm. But you know, I I really want to tell you guys, right? Like you know, all of all the young young folks are going to be listening. Mm. Yeah, I don't want to sound preachy or whatever. But to be very honest, now nah, fucking hell, everybody's taking their life way too seriously. You Gen Zs, <laughs> right? Like <laughs> because you have so much over exposure to. technology to media your social media consumption and like hum log 2g ke zamane mein the yaar like i literally grew up in a mm. 2g zamana so the whole idea is that i see you kids in class uh and everybody is trying to put the world's pressure on you to perform and everything of course if you are a person of ambition um 
you should but i i only see people of ambition at your age should only be like the people who are in sports mm-hmm. right? like that's the golden years of your life 14 15 16 17 right right then just go all in take that pressure soak in that pressure pressure hey, soak in bloody business school right? mm. generic mm. right it's vanilla course right mm. over here this is literally to experience everything if 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 i was in atlas or if no forget atlas overall right like if i wanted i would just keep on doing random ass internships here yeah, random ass internships just talk to people 10 years 15 years elder right like you know i wish when i was 19 or 20 i could go talk to somebody like a uh, abby mm. or omkar or mm. tapish or mm. malcolm mm. right uh, butter malcolm them up so that you can sit on his hayabusa <laughs> right uh, but the whole thing is that tum log i mere ko kabhi kabhi abhi i'm still coming to college i'm i'm a university i'm still teaching and i think people are people are really i don't know how to say it right like i think this generation the gen z's it's more like no i'm getting the right words but really they're taking the they're, they're taking themselves way too seriously mm. right they're taking themselves way too seriously and they're thinking that life is really long we're at the brink of a fucking world war 3 <laughs> right and i'm no no kidding right so is if taking yourself so so seriously there needs to be a creative pursuit right mm. like i'm not saying that just like throw away your life or whatever but just find that one creative pursuit and just think surrender to it right like i surrendered to poetry i was only thinking about poetry not that I, like i ended up becoming a poet or whatever right but whenever i look at my poems i'm like dude who the fuck wrote this this is lit <laughs> right like i read my poem mm. i start crying i'm like i need to have a drink with this poem right like the poem the verses become companion so i don't see a lot of kids at atlas or even otherwise you know surrendering themselves to a creative outlet right be it poetry be it painting be it music be it gaming be it programming be it building something right they're just becoming like really large generalists right like thoda 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 sab karte right like when was like when was the last time i heard a kid like 16 hours 18 hours every day for 3 months straight just doing one thing like, chill karo or just surrender yourself like i'm asking you do you have a creative like when you are alone without your phone and whatever whatever what is that one creator i do write poetry but my like it's not serious at all it doesn't matter yeah. and it doesn't matter who's the fuck will mm. judge it that's what i'm saying mm. you don't become creative to mm. to be judged you become creative to kind of reflect yaar yeah? like mm. you know i used to do a lot of spoken word poetry you know and i loved it right people also liked it appreciated it but if you look at all my poems or whatever only on instagram i must have posted it like 2 3 years ago when i was in russia but i have like books and books and diaries written and i only read it after some time i'm like hey badhiya hai yaar <laughs> yeah, drink to banta hai iske sath right so it's not only about like w- what is the other thing poetry is on the top of your mind nothing else study podcast this, right? yeah, yeah this yeah. right you spend your saturday evening mm. at 20 21 i hope you're going for a party after this otherwise i'll start a party here <laughs> itself <laughs> right <laughs> but again right mm. you're 2021 this is amazing like i really am mm. so happy that you guys are doing it with such seriousness right you don't even know what the outcome is right <laughs> the sub 1000 views don't even discourage <laughs> you <laughs> right but yeah. you're just doing it just because the fuck we can do it all right mm. you're investing your money your hard earned mm. money or you're begging your parents ki thoda paisa de do mere ko my the <laughs> parents are not understanding jack shit that what is the purpose of this podcast mm. it's, it's bloody racist to the people who are actually mute <laughs> right <laughs> but you're doing this and it's brilliant right mm. so that's what i'm talking about like this is great this is your creative outlet so don't say poetry this right think about it you're watching a lot of yeah, i wanted to relate mere ko aur kuch nahi 
नहीं बट देखो ना तुम लोग कितना पॉडकास्ट देख रहे हो ये रिसर्च कर रहे हो मेरा पूरा लिंक प्रोफाइल एक पेज पे डाल के लेके आया कि ये किया ये किया इसके बारे में हम लोग क्वेश्चन पूछेंगे it may lead it may not lead anywhere but you know 5 years later 6 years later you're sitting like this and talking about i spoke about that i i had published my anthology right you're going to talk about this ha mm. <laughs> 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 exactly koi abhi bhi 1500 views hai Ah, guess and sandwich. Oh, he's. You know what he did today? Fuck. This is. These are the kind of people I love calling my friends. You know what he did? <laughs> you gotta show this. See this video. Oh, fuck! I love that guy. He. Um, <clears throat> he ends up parasailing. With a basket of sandwich, and he's throwing it at people. <laughs> what sandwich <laughs> on the beach? <laughs> like what? This guy's your friend? Yeah, he was my couch surfer. You invested, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> what is yeah. couch surfing? <laughs> so, uh, couch surfing. I want to spend two minutes talking about couch surfing, right? So, couch surfing is where you can stay at strangers' houses for free. Mm-hmm. All across my. travel of before i got married of course i was sleeping at other people's places like with permission and everything mm. and not like the other way thank god right no i was in belarus i couch surfed in lithuania i couch surfed in latvia i couch surfed in estonia i couch surfed in uh, romania i couch surfed in uh, germany i couch surfed and germany not like mainstream like berlin or uh, munich or frankfurt like i was in a place called weimar right and i was couch surfing so couch surfing is over here also i i have been able to make friends from around the world right like any country you tell me non mozambique <laughs> because i would know uh huh ki are ye to maputo se hai right um but i i get to meet all these people from around the world and uh, these are all solo travelers i think i've become old especially after marriage my wife does not like couch surfing at all but in the last one year i'll just tell you the kind of people who've come over to my house in santa cruz stayed for free you cook them breakfast you have you take them out you have lovely walks with them grab drinks whatever a uh, customer service rep from uh jakarta um a sandwich maker from azerbaijan um psychologist from naples italy uh, a gay brazilian guy uh <laughs> a gay russian couple a mother daughter uh, duo from again i think russia a young couple from gurgaon like 22 year old both 22 year old couple like a couple from from gurgaon so again these are all people who um who are traveling solo with their purpose of finding themselves and i was this person right like i bloody i still have that backpack where i just used to travel to random places right like fucking random places in the world and just find a couch surfer right and i used to go stay at their place have a nice coffee go out for drinks have a lot of fun and people are just friendly with a st- stranger just because they know that they are travelers and you are a traveler so even like you know any any place i'm staying like even over here of course it's my study room but that study room gets converted into like a guest room like i just opened my phone right now like and, and the reason why i asked you you did not ask about couch surfing is somebody just requested right this guy mm-hmm. called uh, three people requested right now this guy for example gonzalo Li- liniado he requested he's i'm i don't know which country i'm just downloading my app again mm. and they just come they stay over your you share stories they share stories and he just at the end of their whatever they sometimes stay for one day sometimes stay for 15 days and at the end of 10 15 days they're just your friends friends who you might not ever meet again like i know 
I haven't met anybody except like a couple of my friends who have come and stayed. So I encourage everybody to do this bloody solo. Ikkis ke ho gaye na, thoda paisa bachao. Nee to pa niklo. Teen mahina, chhe mahina. खुद से घूमो गरीबों जैसे घूमो शेड आई गेट सो पिस्ट ऑफ द वे यू गाइज फैंसी ट्रेवल यार यू नो इट्स इट्स क्रिंज इट्स ऑनेस्टली क्रिंज ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन ईयर ओल्ड ब्लडी ट्रेवलिंग स्टेइंग इन फाइव स्टार होटल्स हैविंग द ब्लडी फॉन्ड्यू अरे क्या फॉन्ड्यू वाला तीस यूरो का तुम लोग क्या खा रहे हो यार राइट बट वेन द मोमेंट यश यू बिकम आई एवरीबडी बिकम्स ट्वेंटी वन राइट Don't directly jump to college applications. Stop this bloody rat race. Spend three months, six months just traveling the world, learning about different people, learning about cultures. I've slept with no, uh, no shame on airports, on uh, railway stations, on benches, whatever, whatever. Right? I've literally hitchhiked. I I love hitchhiking. Right? And. and start doing that yaar like ye 21 ke baad wo dusra chutiya balak sorry pardon my french there's other bad like you see see how angry i get right after 21 everybody is like oh which college application who who's gonna like how can you be so sure about what you want to do yaar like after you become 21 3 months take off i say 6 months take off and just travel. crazy karo crazy nahi travel karo mm ट्रैवल करते करते कुछ ना कुछ क्रेजी हो जाएगा साउथ ईस्ट एशिया ले लो साउथ ईस्ट यू नो आई लव ऑस्ट्रेलियंस ओके यू गो टू यूरोप द सोलो ट्रैवलर्स यू विल फाइंड ऑस्ट्रेलियंस छः महीना कमा दे छः महीना घूमते राइट लाइक द बेस्ट फ्रेंड्स आई मेड फ्रॉम ऑस्ट्रेलिया वॉज इन डोंट रिमेंबर इन कपल ऑफ स्मॉल टाउन इन इन आइसलिंग इन दर्ज अ स्मॉल प्लेस कॉल्ड आइसलिंग इन 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 जर्मनी रियली गुड वाइन I met these like twenty twenty five Australians. They are miners, okay? Like, khudai karte ho. These are all like miners. They earn decent amount of money, but they just spend six months travel, six months mm. uh, work, six months. Next year, this is one thing what I'm doing again, right? Like, this is my last gasp at my youth. I'm gonna get fit in the next three mm. months. Get my body back. <laughs> Let's go. Me and my wife, we are just taking one year off. Of course, I'm gonna be working on my startup, but one year off. 12 months 12 cities right one month i have the whole list which city when which city when which city when it starts from like you know guangzhou right like tier 2 cities tier 3 cities and after one year is then like we can think of becoming parents right so any i i met my wife because i dared to travel mm. right i was able to think of all my startup ideas because i dared to travel एंड ट्रैवल सोलो मतलब फट लोगों की बहुत फटती है ट्रैवल सोलो करने को आई डोंट नो वाई लाइक शिट इज गोइंग टू हैपन टू यू आई बीन रॉब्ड राइट आई बीन रेशली प्रोफाइल्ड राइट आई गॉट एंग्री बिकॉज दे कॉल मी एन लाइक इतना भी खा लगे राइट मतलब चोरी तो होने वाली है आपका मतलब पैसा जाने वाला है यू गो मिस अ फ्लाइट यू यू गो बी लाइक यू गो स्टार यू गो स्लीप ऑन द रोड ये तो होने ही वाला है राइट इट्स लाइक इट्स वर्थ इट राइट यू आस्क मी दैट ट्वेंटीज हैव आई लिव्ड आउट माई ट्वेंटी आई एम लाइक फक ये राइट ट्रेवल द वर्ल्ड मेट द मोस्ट अमेजिंग पीपल एंड इफ एनी बडी टोल मी दैट यू नो वेन आई ग्रेजुएटेड विद टू पॉइंट सिक्स You, Seven mm. would I end up like this? The answer would have been like no. <laughs> oh no! Like ten years later, fifteen years later, I can also be the president of Russia after Putin. I I can get a passport. I'm thinking that. How can I become the the most powerful person I've met is me then? So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's it. Cool guys, work see. Yeah. Okay. Non-veg wale burger kya hai ga? <laughs> मेरे को तो बहुत मतलब <laughs>